Good morning, students. I sure hope y'all are having a good time while you're off, but I hope you're reading a lot too and doing a lot of schoolwork. Keeping up, keeping up's the best thing. I sure do miss reading to y'all. It's not as much fun reading into this phone camera. <laughs> and I sure do miss seeing your faces every day. We're on chapter five. Now remember, KT and her mom and dad have moved to Florida. And she just got a special prize to go to the Dolphin Aquarium, the Dolphin Sanctuary Place. So let's see what happens next. The next morning, Mom and I arrive at Dolphin Cove. Gravel rumbles beneath Boogla's tires as we pull into the parking lot at 8.30 sharp. Boy, does Dolphina Cove have one stunning parking lot. Okay, the gravel is pretty standard, but you know, the lush roundings around it make up for it. Bright orange and purple flowers burst from the vines that lines the lot's perimeter. The main building is light pink, the shade of a Brazilian real river dolphin to be exact, with beautiful white trim and looks as it came out of a Caribbean fairy tale. I snap a few photos with my mom as she unloads my chair from the car. She's had more practice, but she's not as quick as Lucy as putting Sprinkle back together. I want to capture every moment of this experience. My birthday is exactly 48 days. Pretty sure today could be the actual highlight of my pre-teenager life. I want to be certain there's proper documentation. Mom pushes me up the ramp to the reception center, then holds the door as I wheel myself inside. A woman sits behind the tall white desk, but I can only see her from the eyes up. She has white blonde hair and a forehead that looks like it's been in the sun way too long. She wears a pink visor even though we're inside. We seem to be the only visitors. We're here for the trainer for the day program, Mom announces to the woman. Oh, you must be KT, she exclaims. Her southern accent is so thick. Those will take me a while to get used to. They're very different from the accent back home in Iowa. She stands to introduce herself. My name is Annie, and we're so happy to have you here at Dolphina Cove. She's very chirpy, but then again, she does get to hang out around dolphins for a living. So I can't blame her. I notice her nails are painted light purple. When she smiles, she smiles big. One of her front te teeth is slightly gray. Annie explains a bunch of stuff about sun protection, bathrooms, and a waiver. But I'm hardly listening. I gaze at the photographs all around the happy Dolphina Cove visitors' quarters. I, seriously, I've never seen humans look so happy as they do in these pictures. Maybe I'll get my photo on the wall, too. Do I get to do that? I ask pointing to a particular image of a little kid being pulled through the water by a dolphin's dorsal fin. You are going to have the best day. I smile, but it's not lost on me. She didn't exactly answer my question. I also notice that she's looking at mom as she talks to me. It's not the first time this has happened. Are you excited? Annie asked in a high pitch. Extremely, I say, making my voice a little lower than usual. I do this sometimes when grown-ups talk to me like I'm a baby. It happens all the time, actually. Mom squeezes my shoulder and I shoot her a smile. It's okay. Fantastic. Let's get out back, Annie says, and points to the exit behind me. I turn and head through the glass door that obviously leads to a great big deck. Hoo-wee! You better slow down or we're going to get a speeding ticket, Annie says. Vroom, vroom, I reply without looking back, and I hear Annie catch her breath as she laughs. When we get to the exit, I smack the silver button that opens the door automatically. While I wait, while we wait, I look up at Annie and smile. As I expected, she seems to be a little bit more at ease, which makes everything easier. Nervous grown-ups are just a handful. You've got some spunk, Annie says. Tara, your trainer, will be up in just a minute. Once Annie goes back inside, I give Mom that look, which she returns, and we shake our heads together. I appreciate that Mom lets me handle adults who don't seem totally able to deal with my chair. It doesn't mean we can't roll our eyes about that afterwards, even though, even in Iowa City, there was always the Walmart cashier or the college student who seemed not to remember I was a functioning human being when they interacted with me. But it's easy to forget about Annie once I take the view in front of me. The large deck overlooks a scattering of picnic tables, 
docks and what must be the Dolphin Lagoon. Just beyond the lagoon is beautiful open water. A sheltered bench area in front of the dock obscures a complete view of the lagoon, but I can still see far, far into the gulf. Unlike the beach on Sister, Sister Secret Day, the water is a dark, dense blue. Not murky like Lake McBride back in Iowa, but definitely not your classic Florida postcard. Still, I feel like I'm in a Disney movie. The sky is a delightful shade of blue. I'm surrounded by radiant flowers. Birds are chippering all around me. And I think I even saw a butterfly. The ocean is right here. And even though I can't see it yet, I'm closer than I've ever been. Not but one, but multiple dolphins. I literally have to pinch myself. Pretty cool, Mom says. <clears throat> I can't believe that this is my reality right now. I'm glad you're happy, Mom says. She looks so pretty and happy, too. Her hair's a little bit wavier than usual. And I would say this to her face, but the crinkles on the side of her eyes when she smiles aren't as deep. <laughs> maybe it's the sunshine, or maybe it's just the close proximity to the world's most magical creatures, those creatures, creatures being dolphins. I see Tara walking toward us from a building next to the docks. Unlike my encounter with Era and Annie, just the sight of Tara immediately puts me at ease. She's like the camp counselor I never had, probably because I've never been to camp. <laughs> Her hair is also white blonde, but probably from the sun and not chemicals. As she nears, I see her light brown freckles, but almost all over the surface of her skin. She's wearing leggings, flip-flops, <clears throat> and a navy t-shirt with the Dolphina Cove logo. Solid dolphin trainer uniform. Around her neck is a silver whistle that reminds me of a squid hangs from a blue lanyard glistening in the sun. Hi, I'm Tara, you must be KT, she says as she approaches. I meet her extended hand for a hearty shake. She looks me in the eye and smiles. So excited to have you with us today. Me too, I smile back. So here's the plan. I'll show you around a little bit and then we'll get down to business. We'll spend the first part of our time together prepping for the training session so that you can see what goes on behind the scenes. Then we'll get you in the water for a swim at the very end. How does that sound? <gasps> Great, the best, let's do it. Hearing the words in the water for a swim makes me feel more real. My mind is moving like a mile a minute. I have a gazillion questions. And I also sort of want to tell Tara tons of stuff I already know about dolphins. Tara, if it's okay, I'll let you guys do your thing while I get some work done here on the picnic table, Mom says. Mom is the best. Like Katie and KT, she's good at reading my mind. I'm glad that the majority of this day will be all about me and I'll be on my own. <coughs> Excuse me. And all the dolphins I'm about to meet to swim with and befriend. Nope, <clears throat> it hasn't gotten old yet. Absolutely, Miss Wynn. Annie says. And videos, and videos, Mom assures me, have the best time, KT lady. With that, Tara and I chit chat as we follow down a concrete path to the dock. So, do you want to be a dolphin trainer one day? I think about it for a second. I'm not sure. Honestly, I've never considered it before. My main goal was just to find a way to hang out with them. <clears throat> when you do, when did you know that that's what you wanted to do? I caught the dolphin bug when I was a little kid after a family trip to a sanctuary in Hawaii. I just thought they were so cool and wanted to learn everything I could about them. Totally, I visited the Chicago Aquarium for the first time when I was in second grade and was totally obsessed. I don't need to explain why. It feels pretty obvious to me why dolphins are the absolute best and I'm 100% positive Tara gets it too. <clears throat> so all you have to do is all sorts of marine biology stuff in college? Actually, I was a psychology major. No way! My mom's a psychology teacher. I mean, professor. She'd kill me if she heard me make that mistake. Fair enough, she spent a gazillion years in school to earn her professor title. Yeah, working with marine mammals is actually a lot like studying behavior and reading and interpreting actions. Tara pauses as she turns back to look at me. Watch that break in the sidewalk. Do you need help getting over it, Tara asks. No thanks, I've got it. Cool, Tara says as she turns back and continues down the path. I like Tara already. I give myself a wind up wheel that's a technical term 
meaning an extra effort of spin to the speed of my bis bicycle wheel, like an extra bump in case the maneuver needs more management. And glide over that crack, no problem. Anyway, as you see it, most of the work we do with dolphins is about forming relationship, seeing what the animal's needs are and shaping their behavior in a positive way. We sort of all, we sort all their meals and feed them, but aren't the ones to determine their individual dietary requirements, for example. Gotcha, I said. I can't wait to tell mom everything she knows about psychology. She could be a professionally trained slash dolphin expert in no time. Maybe it runs in the family. Once we're on the dock, I lock my wheels a few feet from the edge and peer into the dark water. The lagoon is smaller than a football field. Actually, it is half a football field. To my left, another part of the dock juts into the water like a peninsula, perpendicular to the one we're on, serving as a pathway so trainers or visitors cannot can access most of the lagoon, I guess. What looks like a short fence covered in shrubs and swampy weeds separates the outer edge of the lagoon into open water. The same beautiful flowers from the parking lot line the perimeter. It's very tranquil, too tranquil. Where are they, I asked. I sense movement beneath the surface of the water, but I can't see anything, not yet. Are they sleeping? That's the only explanation I can think of, or hiding. Oh no, they're just playing hard to get, Tara said. How deep is this water? Oh, it's a good 20 feet deep. Plenty of depth for the animals to get exercise. What's down there, I wondered aloud. Same as the ocean floor, I'm not familiar with the ocean floor. Seaweed plants, open ocean water can come in and out of the lagoon with tides as well as fish. Fish are in this lagoon too? I strain to see my x-ray vision is not helping. Sure, we want to maintain as organic an environment as possible for these animals. Because we feed them and reward them behavior with food, they rarely hunt, but there are fish for them to eat if they like but they tend to get a little lazy. Hunt, the main word sticks out. I never thought of dolphins as hunters, just adorable cute creatures that glide through aqua water and jump into the air with glee. This is different than what I imagined, not necessarily less postcardy, maybe just a different postcard. Just over there, Tara points to the hedge fence at the far end of the lagoon, is the gulf. As I mentioned, small fish and marine life can come and go, so this space really mimics their natural habitat. Sweet. Let's see who's ready to play, and Tara looks around the lagoon. Luna, Sammy, Ginger, don't be shy. Evidence of a slight current ripples in the surface of the water, but no dolphins yet. I have no idea where the first one will pop up, and I don't want to miss it. And then it happens. A dorsal fin slices through the surface of the water in the length of two belugas in front of me, then another. They're so close. Luna, there you are, baby, Tara says in a tone one might use expecting to talk to a toddler. Except she's basically screaming, which somehow makes the cooing voice not annoying. I let my eyes follow where I imagine Luna is and the other fin have swung. It seemed like they're circling back to the far end. I used my arms to push myself up a little bit higher in my chair when it finally happens. First it's noise and then it's head burst through the surface. Just like Flipper in every cartoon and movie combined, a dolphin bobs right in front of us, making that high pitched clicking sound that I know for sure is laughing. I in turn start to laugh uncontrollably, like Luna is tickling my heart. Once I start, I cannot stop, it's amazing. Luna, you are the cutest, aren't you? Tara exclaims, as too if she's seeing her for the first time. Her daughter, Sammy, is usually right behind. They're still very attached. Oh, there she is. Another dolphin basically looks like Luna, but a tiny bit smaller swims up. A moment later, they dip back underwater, t making their tails make splashes all along the way. Oh, okay, Sammy's not being too friendly today, I see. Tara laughs again. I still love you. She turns her attention back, 
my way and resumes her talking like a human in a vo human voice. <laughs> we have seven dolphins living with us here at Dolphina Cove right now. The youngest calf is about one and the most mature female is almost 13. Like me, I announced. Oh, cool, birthday coming up? 48 days, I answered, not that I'm counting. 13th birthday is big, Tara confirms. I couldn't agree more. Tara continues to describe the characteristics of each dolphin. Ginger has a nick in her tail. Luna was injured when they found her and now has a crossbite, though she doesn't seem to be in any pain. I do my best to listen and watch all at the same time. Unlike when we first approached, the dolphins are a lot more active now. Some come to us with their mouths open, hoping for food, Tara explains, while others seem to be taking their morning swim around the lagoon. Just when I least expect it, a new dolphin pops his head to the surface. Dolphins can make great ninjas. They're really on point with stealth moves. Well, be back later, cuties, Tara Coos. Then to me. We need to go and sort and weigh the fish before the first session. Sounds good, I respond. I reach down to unlock my wheels when a flash of movement at the far end of the lagoon catches my eye. If it were a cartoon character, my jaw would be on the floor. Literally, tongue out on red carpet. That's how incredible it is to see a dolphin jump into the air. Oh, Cola, you're such a show off, Tara exclaims. Cola leaps again and then again, higher each time she does it. Wow, I'm surprised I could even get that syllable out. I'm tempted to take a video with my phone. Katie and KT, and really anyone with any bits of sense, would lose their minds if they saw this. Cola is our newest. Only been with us a couple of weeks. He's a sweetie, but he sure has a lot of energy. Cola leaps again and then swims around the perimeter of the lagoon. His dorsal fin slice through the surface of the water. He dips completely under, only to resurf a moment later, cascading through the water. I see you, Cola, I think. I notice that all the other dolphins have retreated to their hiding places beneath the water surface. Yep, quite a personality, Tara reiterates. Then once more to Cola, show off. Watching Cola, it strikes me. These animals are majestic and strong and graceful and absolutely enormous. I feel like a little ant next to them. Good thing dolphins are so cute. After the mini dolphin introduction, Tara takes me back to the trainer's office, which consists of a room with two computers, folding chairs, and a long plastic table and a giant whiteboard. A doorway on the opposite side where we entered reveals what seems to be sort of a kitchen, but without a stove or oven for cooking. Gigantic metal countertops and sinks line the white walls next to a row of three monstrous refrigerators. The whole room is covered in tile, reminding me of an empty swimming pool. Also, it smells like chlorine and fish. More fish than chlorine. Okay, all fish. This is where we have our staff meetings and where all the schedule and feeding information is kept. The phone rings. Once, one sec, Tara says as she goes to answer it. T Trainer's office, this is Tara, I hear her say. While she chats, I maneuver, sprinkle around the folding chairs to get a better look at the whiteboard. Each of the seven dolphins get their own column with their picture next to their name like they're movie stars. Next to each dolphin headshot in the perfect loopy handwriting are reminders and list of chemicals. 2.5 L H2O, new drops for Luna, all kinds of things. Next to the technical slash of sciency notes is a section for which, to, which seems to be more trainer related details. Luna, don't ask for elephant UFN. Cola has special instructions to ask for five to six deep breaths in the AM or the PM. Wow, it's if they are humans. I wonder if deep breaths do the same thing for dolphins as people. I had a teacher back in the second grade who always told us to take a balloon breath if we were feeling angry or sad. Does Cola need a reminder for that in the morning or at night too? I think about when I saw him swimming leaps, laps and leaps around the water. He probably needs to catch his breath at the very least. Below Cola also has another note highlighted with red asterisks, only tail wave with guest. So, Tara says when she's done on the phone, as you can see, we keep pretty detailed uh, things around here. I nod, yes, I can't help but wonder why Cola only tail waves. I also desperately want to see a tail wave. If I had a tail, 
I'd probably use it to wave all the time. Why not? I just talked to Annie up at the office. It's pretty mellow today. The only session with guests isn't until the end of the day. Then slightly under breath, Annie has a heart of gold but is still learning the ropes. Anyway, it'll just be you and the trainers all morning. Great, I said. Tara takes her eyes, takes me to the kitcheny space where the other two trainers do their duty of sorting the fish in big cardboard boxes into buckets that hang from hooks attached to some sort of scale that dangles from the ceiling. Y'all, this is KT, she's my shadow for the day. KT, this is Jolie and Natalie. Hey, they say. I'd like to shake their hands, but I'm covered in half frozen fish guts, <laughs> Natalie says cheerfully. Welcome, KT, Jolie explains. One thing I'm learning about dolphin trainers is they have no, they're no shortage of enthusiasm. Also, a major part of their job is sorting out fish and organizing all that fish in gazillion different buckets. Much more to this trainer, dolphin trainer thing than I thought. Each dolphin gets a specialized diet, Tara says. She digs in and starts dropping half-frozen Pacific herring into metal buckets. They clank like icicle instruments. Our girl Sammy needs a little more meat on her bones, so she gets a fattier fish than they, says Luna. What about cola? Oh, sweet cola, baby. Is as healthy as a horse. Weird comparison. Psst, Tara says. Tara, Natalie, and Jolie break down how the feeding works. The first task of the morning is always sorting food, which takes a while because dolphins eat a lot. Like 25 pounds of fish per day. That's like one and a half sprinkles. Most of their fish come straight frozen from Canada. And dolphins live until like... 30 to 50, right? I can't help showing off what I've learned about dolphins over the years. I want Tara and all present company to know that they're dealing with a kind of expert. Yep, generally they live much longer than us than they would with us than they would in the wild, Jolie says. Do the dolphins here ever go back to the wild, I ask? No, not usually. In some scenarios, we might transfer one to a more suitable sanctuary, but once a dolphin has been under our care, it's not easy for them to transition back into open water, mainly because they're not used to hunting. Interesting, she says. Tara adds, when I mention to people that I'm a dolphin trainer, they sometimes come to me with stereotypes. Oh, like you trap dolphins for a living. I swallow it. Glad she can't, can't read my mind. I remember a some, some similar fear that crossed my brain. Or my favorite, Natalie says, don't you feel bad keeping wild animals in a tank? So, not a tank. So annoying, Natalie adds. I know the feeling, I think, but I don't say it. Natalie spells it out. Our sweet babies are well fed, cared for, and if they're sick or injured and basically get dozens of body rubs all day long. In other words, dolphins here at Dolphina Cove, or any other sanctuary for that matter, are really living their best lives. Them and me both. Over the next hour, I watch Tara weigh more buckets of fish, insert vitamins into the fish gills, and clean every surface with a special soap and drown everything in water. Finally, it's time for the playing part, aka training session. My heart twirls with excitement. A session I learned is when trainers work with dolphins one-on-one -on -one and practice different behaviors. The whistle hanging around their necks are actually called bridges, which I personally think is much cooler than whistle. Mysteriously, yet professional. Tara uses her bridge or bridges whenever Sammy does the behavior she asks. So the dolphin hears that high-pitched tweet and associates it with the behavior. With Tara, Jolie, and Natalie all in the session at the same time, regular chirps fill the air. I learned so much from observing a session that I would, from the internet, first dolphins have toys for days, hula hoops, balls of various sizes, and frisbees. The trainers call these toys enrichment. Technical term, playing with the poodle no no noodle, Natalie explains between the bridges, isn't just fun for animals, but resembles movements and challenges the dolphins might experience in the wild, which keeps them both mentally and physically fit. Pretty cool, the ultimate two birds, one stone situation. Second, all successful completions of a behavior are rewarded with the positive reinforcement of a fish, a frozen fish in a block of ice or flavorous jello. Tara lets me throw a reinforcement, a hunk of jello, to Sammy when she successfully retrieves a piece of 
enrichment, a red buoy. Fun fact that even I wasn't aware of, despite my dolphin obsession. Dolphins don't chew their food. That's right, they have tons of little tic-tac teeth, <laughs> but those are only used to snag the goods. Once the food is in their possession, they just swallow it whole. Like dad tried to teach Lucy and me how to eat oysters. No, thank you. Third, not that this really news per se, but wow, can dolphins get air? Sammy, yes, Sammy, the youngest dolphin in the lagoon, can essentially do the dolphin equivalent of a dunk. She's able to launch herself out of the water like an actual torpedo. I can't help but laugh uncontrollably when I see her. It's just so amazing. But part of me wonders if she could leap over the house or like a two-story house. I look at the barrier of shrubs that separates the lagoon from open water. Could she jump over that fence thing, I asked Tara. Oh yeah, if she wanted to. Couldn't you, big girl? She looks at Sammy. <laughs> Shh. Shouldn't that be the fence a little higher, maybe then? Dolphins are extremely powerful animals, but they don't have depth perception, perception. So they can't actually see that they're easy able to hop a fence. Tara goes on to explain that the dolphins see out of each eye separately. Very cool and it makes me dizzy to think about it. They also sleep with half of their brain at one time so one half of their brain is active while the opposite eye opens and alert. Humans are involuntary breathers. We can breathe even when we're sleeping without thinking about it. But dolphins are not. Which is why we have to stay half awake all the time. Thinking about that kind of makes my whole brain tired. I don't totally get it, but it sounds like something every kid under the age of 18 would love to be able to do. Tara makes, takes more time to confirm that while she might seem like a boot camp, definitely not what I was thinking, she has a point. Dolphins are extremely intelligent and curious creatures. Sessions are actually really fun and stimulating for them. As an extreme intelligent and curious creature myself, I hope seventh grade at Fernbank Middle School, which begins in less than 24 hours, feels the same way. While Tara works on Sammy on a behavior slightly less dramatic than Olympic gymnast, I watch Natalie and Cola. Cola is definitely active and splashy. Is Cola to practice her tail flip, I asked, remembering the note I saw? I don't want Cola to miss out on the, all the fun. Right now, we're working on bonding. Isn't that right? Natalie tweets her bridge and throws Cola a slightly bloody fish. He gobbles it up and dives underneath the water. Natalie tweets her bridge once and then again, but Cola doesn't return. Cola away, she announces. She must seem concerned about the look on my face and then explains. That just means I've lost sight of him and it lets other trainers know it's, about all, it's all about communication over here. A moment later, Cola appears with a shameless grin on his ma face, mouth open, smiling big, apparently ready for more treats, or more fun, or both. Toward the end of the session, after Cola completes a particularly impressive aerial move, Natalie bridges and he glides over for a belly rub. Natalie lies on her stomach on the deck and reaches her hand to graze Cola's white underside. Good job, Cola. I love you so much. Cola looks quite pleased with himself. Though I'm only several feet away, I'm not sure if he can see me, but I give him a solid grin and wave anyhow. Then, and I swear this is true, Cola lifts his right fin and waves right back. It's a Dolphina Cove miracle. Unfortunately, the impromptu wave also splashes Natalie right in the face. Bad manners, Cola, she scolds. You know better. Cola swims away, slipping his tail up under for another splash before he disappears. He does not get fish or jello when he returns a moment later. That's chapter five. We'll get to chapter six probably tomorrow or the next day because I am as excited as you are to find out how this story is going to take place. So remember to think about the move that KT has made, what we're looking forward to, what do you think is going to happen when KT gets in the water and actually swims. I'm kind of excited to find out that myself. So. We'll see you patriots a little later. Y'all have a great day. Bye.